Some Pascagoula residents say something stinks and they've had enough. Now they're fighting for better air quality in the flagship city and working with a national environmental nonprofit. Amber Spradley starts us off here in the studio with the latest on this story. Yeah, Hugh, Jennifer, thank you. Neighbors I've been meeting with in the Cherokee subdivision say they're fed up with strong odors. They say some of them make them sick. It's an issue they say that's been going on and off for at least a decade. Last week, the odor reached more parts of the city with complaints pouring in. After years of complaining, these residents are now taking measures into their own hands with an outside partner and an upcoming survey. 200 households in the area can soon expect to find a door hanger on their door and a survey. <coughs> Every one of these folks have been contacted. They're our representatives. Barbara Wekeser lives on Cherokee Drive, close by the large industrial plants that have also called Pascagoula home for decades. She and her neighbors have complained about an irritating smell for many years, but they don't feel like anyone's listening. Why let these people continue to live in this environment? This has gone on since 2010. You know you have a big problem and it's getting worse. Public meetings over the years brought together industry, state and local leaders to talk with neighbors about their concerns. It's hard because the kids want to go outside and play and when I do let them play <clears throat> outside, then you know, that night they're hacking and coughing or runny nose. Julie Hamby moved to Mohawk Avenue about 30 years ago. I mean, we've kind of got used to it, but then you come back to reality and say, oh, it, you know, there's that smell again, you know, they're polluting the air, we can't breathe fresh air. Like Julie said, she's been in a brain fog. Yes, because that's what it does to you. It makes your lips go numb. They weren't the only residents feeling it last week. Calls ringing in at the State Department of Environmental Quality. When we get uh, the volume of complaints that we did this time, uh, we knew something was going on and we're still investigating exactly what happened. MDEQ Executive Director Chris Wells says his agency took 600 readings in over 60 locations last week, still unable to track down the source. Chevron Refinery is the, is the facility that um, we believe was having the issue this time. There are other industries in that area. I visited Chevron to find out what's being done at the industry level. In this case, we began the air monitoring during the time that the uh, odor complaints we were made, made aware of those, and we found that there were no detection of those chemicals that we monitored. Chevron workers immediately implemented their odor response plan, testing the atmosphere with this multi-gas detector. Throughout the community and its refinery, Chevron tests for a number of substances like hydrogen sulfide, sulfide dioxide, carbon monoxide, benzene, and more. I think there's been a, a good effort on many different stakeholders to address the residents' concern about uh, the health impact that the odors may have. Still need to work on the nuisance side of it. But neighbors like Wekeser and Hamby worry the odor is more than a nuisance. That's why they're taking matters into their own hands and working with a national environmental group called Buy-In. Some local governments will be more proactive about saying, you know, oh, you know, we understand that you have these air quality issues, you know, what can we do to help you? And that has not really happened in this subdivision. Now hired by buy-in and supplied with door hangers and tablets, the residents are preparing to survey their own neighborhood in hopes of getting state and local buy-in for a property buyout. We'll ask them, you know, if they're interested in moving, what kinds of assistance they might need if they are, and where they might want to go. After the survey, Osamu Kumasaka says he'll work with local leaders to assist in applying for federal funding available for an environmental buyout. It's important to us that we take our cues from, you know, folks who've actually lived in these neighborhoods and have had to bear the brunt of these environmental impacts. What more do you need, MDEQ, EPA, to listen to us and work to get us moved out? MDEQ has been awarded a grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, for year-long air monitoring in the Cherokee subdivision area. That funding is still on the way. In the meantime, neighbors beginning to survey 200 homes over the next two months will take you along door-to-door -door when that takes off. The link will also be available online for that survey. We'll have it attached to this story on our website at WLOX.com.